What's up guys, Dimebot here. Today we're going to be playing a little game called Iron Brigade. Yes, my character is wearing a tiki mask. Uh, a buddy of mine had gotten all over me recently to get this game. I had previously passed it up in the Xbox Live Arcade store, uh, so I'm actually kind of glad I listened to him and picked it up. We did play the co-op and it's pretty fun. What you're seeing in the background is me modifying my trench, which is that giant hulking mech-like thing back there. This is kind of a steampunk thing. It's a World War One or World War Two or something, but there are giant walking mech suits. Kind of an alternate reality thing. This game was made by Double Fine. It is a lot of fun. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of selecting my weapons, uh, you know, looking at what I've got equipped. Each trench has a core slot and then legs. Now, the legs can have abilities like running faster, things like that, and the core dictates what kind of emplacements, which you can see me looking at right here, that you can carry, on how many weapons, and also things like how much money it costs to drop certain emplacements, how much money it costs to upgrade them. So It's a, a third-person tower defense game, pretty fun. Let's see how it goes in this level. I prefer to kind of go gun heavy, not so much emplacement heavy, which does get me in trouble from time to time. Uh, visually, this game has a pretty neat art style that I've found myself liking pretty quickly. It is, as you would expect, nice and dark. So, every mission you get this little setup about why this is so important, which I tend to just gloss over. The story is that some Russian guy heard some broadcast, and it, there he is right there. Uh, it's a very stereotypical Russian guy. It made him all crazy, and now he's using these things called tubes to take over the world. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, not much for video games. Oh, great. Aerial stuff. I hate this. It's worth noting that this is an earlier level in the game, because I wanted to be able to talk and also be able to concentrate on the game. I didn't want to be overwhelmed. First thing we're going to do is find a place to put down an emplacement. So, glowing obvious placement pad... I think that would work. And they just shoot in, burrow into the ground. And we'll, oh, being attacked. Not cool. Let's plop down a turret, see if it can get rid of those. And I have a pretty sick rocket launcher, or artillery thing, as you can see. And what you do when you kill things is you suck up scrap, which is those little glowing bits that just float into my trench. And what they do is they give you the money that you need to put down more turrets. Obviously, since everything's red over there, I don't have enough right now. So... And we should have more things coming at us in a moment. There's a handy-dandy wave timer. Let's see if my artillery can get there. It could have gotten there if it weren't for serious user error. Well, just machine gun everything to death. Wave complete. Now, as I said, I'm a little overpowered for this, so if you're wondering why I'm mowing through waves so quickly, that is the reason. And I um, was using my sprint ability right there. One thing I don't actually like about the sprint ability is once you let go of the sprint button, uh, there is a couple second delay before you can actually turn again, which has gotten my behind handed to me a couple times. Uh, I've been trying not to curse, so. Yeah. Uh, the controls are pretty responsive. I'm not having too much trouble taking down the aerial guys. You can tweak them a little bit. They work just fine for me. I have played some third-person games where the aiming controls just made me want to throw my controller through the wall or use its cord to strangle somebody. Wait, cord? Yes, most of the time I leave my Xbox controller plugged into the charging cord because this one is old and does not like to hold a charge. Deal with it. And now we have more enemies incoming. It is worth noting that this is the basic setup of this game. Sometimes there's a boss thrown in. Sometimes you're trying to defend something for a certain amount of time until... A certain action. Whoa, it exploded, guys. Okay, there's certain enemies that come straight for your face, and I hate them. Uh, but it's, there are some other kind of one-off missions. They're few and far between, so if you do not like repetition, I wouldn't really recommend this game for you because what you are seeing is what you get. Not that it's a bad game. It has some DLC that's fun. has a survival mode. I'm not down with survival modes. They're just not that enjoyable to me. But the single player and the co-op are where it's at for me. If you don't like tower defense games and you don't particularly care for, you know, this style of mission setup, well, this is Iron Brigade, so don't buy it if you're that person. However, if you are that person, this is a fun game. I don't remember how much I paid for it because I just didn't pay attention, sorry. Plus, Microsoft points, I have trouble converting them to real-world money. I wish they would just switch to real-world money, which I can't say the world word world today for some reason, sorry. 
which I've heard they're going to do. That'll be fantastic. And if I seem like I'm babbling, it's because I'm trying to find something to talk about while I... Ooh, shine. Oh, wait. Those are the guys that kill me. For those wondering what's going on when I fire that mortar, it is a MERV, which means that it drops other little mortar rounds as it goes. If you fire it down a long lane of approaching enemies and you don't derp it up like I do most of the time, it is highly effective. Uh, my buddy played kind of an engineer class, and I played heavy weapons when we did our co-op, but he did have a MERV launcher, and he knew how to use it because he plays a lot. Um, his mech is giant, trench rather, is giant and golden and shiny as compared to mine. And he was just devastating, just whole rows of enemies with the thing. It was truly impressive to watch. So shout out to uh, my boy, who will be watching this video, I'm sure, and knows exactly what I'm talking about. It also didn't help that uh, we played the game after I had probably had a couple too many drinks, and every time I saw something new, I got scared because I didn't really know what was going on. What What's going on now? Oh, God! Okay, so um, lightning is hitting everywhere. There are obvious glowing spots on the ground. It'll kill me. Eh, whatever, wave completed. So, I love the pilots in this game. They always make uh, little quips, like my guy's Polish, and uh, when his trench gets really heavily damaged, he'll uh, just go, Trenches in Poland take three times as much damage. No complaining. Or uh, when he's reloading a gun, he'll go, Polish gun would have been reloaded by now. And I don't do accents, so yeah, just get over that. So, the next thing we're going to do is come over here and plop down another turret. Turrets are upgradable. I think I did that a little while ago and kind of forgot to say anything about it. Uh, it does cost a little extra to upgrade them. If I was using a better chassis, I probably would have been able to throw down more upgrades, but I like my guns. All right, how many more waves are there? Uh, you see my ba base health over there on the right, and if you've noticed, I'm getting XP. You get XP in levels, which allow you to access better weapons and cores and legs. Uh, there's also specific challenges. I believe on this mission, if I keep my base health above 80%, I'll get some extra swag, which would be nice. I've already taken some damage, so I hope that it wasn't too much. This game, one thing that is worth noting, is it is not afraid to throw multi-pronged attacks at you. In fact, some of the later levels get pretty hectic, and the DLC, which I will not spoil your location, uh, but it is different than the setting of the main game, I'm pretty sure some of the missions are damn near impossible. Look, biplanes! are damn near impossible if you don't have a co-op buddy. That's another wave down. I believe this particular mission ends with a boss, and if it's the boss I think it is, it becomes a common enemy in the later stages, which is really annoying, actually. I hate it when games do that. It's like, here, have this super tough enemy that it's going to really whoop the crap out of you. By the way, in the next level, we're going to throw five of them at you at once. That's just, I hate that. That's probably one of the only complaints I have about games. Fortunately, Double Fine handled it really well. By the time most boss enemies become recurring enemies, you have the weaponry you need to basically speak, oh, it's you again, die. Uh, those guys almost took a chunk out of my base. Sorry about the uh, sniffing, if you can hear it, guys. I'm a little stopped up today. My allergies are giving me problems for some reason. So, Collecting scrap is key. Right now, I've got enough to be able to throw down another turret. And as you see here, we do have a multi-pronged attack coming in, so I'm going to focus on the aerials first because they irritate me. Actually, I think it might both be aerials, but whatever. Nope, they're ground enemies. Now, this is why you have your turrets, because by the time I had turned around, they had taken some damage off those guys, and then I was able to just finish them with one shot. I know some people play this very turret heavy and are probably just like, Dimebot, what's wrong with you? You're not playing the game the way it's meant to be played? Well, if I'm not playing it the way it's meant to be played, then why is there the option to win like this? Tell me that, interwebs. And now we have more of those explodey guys. They're best dealt with at long range because they do massive chunks of damage and I don't feel like dying. Easily taken care of. I'll just pick up this scrap while my turrets deal with the uh, flying nuisances behind me. And let's use the sprint ability. There we go. Give me that sweet, sweet scrap. Nom, 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 nom. Speaking of om nom, uh, if you haven't gone and watched the Nice Peter uh, picture song, Om Nom 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 Babies, I highly recommend that you do. It's hysterical. Plus, I just love Nice Peter. And here we go with the weird weather thing again. And that whining is really loud in my headphones. Oh, my God. Please make it stop. OK. 
Okay. Oh, aerials. Great. Or the, no, ground units. Kill them turrets. Nice. Give me that scrap. Give it, give it, give it. Okay, so now we're going to upgrade this turret. Which I find amusing because when you upgrade them, a new pod just slams into the current one and destroys it. Like, really? This is an efficient use of resources? But hey, video game logic for the win, as I've said before. Just like eating a mushroom in Mario makes you bigger. It makes no sense, and yet we all just accept it. So here we have, I believe, a three-pronged attack. Yes, we do. So uh, There's one mission later in the game where you're in a circular room, and they come at you from all four sides, and there are some really powerful enemies in those waves. Uh, I wish that I had had a co-op partner with that one, because it was nasty. Mm, maybe I was seeing things up the middle lane, because the turrets took care of what came from behind really easily. And give me that scrap. Scrap, 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 scrap. Mm, yummy. Ought to be able to upgrade another turret. Up oh, here he comes. Crazy stereotypical Russian guy. Tell us about the boss. Tell us all about the boss. Is this the boss that I think it is? Mm, quit. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's the boss I think it is. I... I hated this thing when I first ran into it. Um, now, whenever I see, like, two or three of them, I'm just like, come here so I can murder you. So. Oh, look at him all flying around. He's so pretty. I want to destroy his face with my machine guns. I'm not even going to try to fire my mortar at him. That just ain't going to work. Yes, in your face. And I walked up the wrong side of the wall like a moron. I ain't getting to that loot box. As the mission's going to cut me off here in just a second... And, yep. Oh, he's drinking a whole bottle of liquor. Yes, my pilot is an alcoholic. So fun. Victory in Europe. All right, so we've got a results screen to go through. Let's see what I got. Loading, 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 loading. All right, spoils war. Hey, my airfield was not too damaged, so I got some XP. As you can see, I'm pretty close to gaining a level. And got some cash, which is going to be used in the store. I want shiny stuff. Um, a lot of these weapons I've already picked up. They're not really good. That might help me, but the rest of it's not. Because this is an earlier mission. And, yeah. All right, so there are challenges uh, that you can do. Kind of like COD or Gears of War. Uh, each one gives you cash or a weapon or something. So they are worth trying to do. Most of them you'll get naturally through gameplay. And uh, then we should be back on our aircraft carrier that can, yep, there it is, that can float, can also walk on land, and go, minor spoiler, into space. Hee <laughs> hee. Sup? Wait, is he? He's doing, yes, he's doing the Vulcan thing from Star Trek. Uh, well, guys, uh, I hate to say it, but I think we know how this video is going to end. I just can't help the obvious joke. So, uh, yeah, this has been Iron Brigade. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, guys. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, guys. I have to do it. I, I just can't help myself. So until next time, this is going to be so cheesy. So cheesy. Live long and prosper. Dimebot out.